never can leave the gym when he has to go home with his coach because even when he's at home, when he may want to watch a TV program that he wants to watch, like in my case, I'm saying, you know, you should be watching a boxing film. He wants to go out and play basketball, which he could do if his dad wasn't his coach. And his dad goes out and says, you should be playing basketball because you're going to change because you got a fight coming up next week. That's one thing that I don't do today. I don't bring boxing home. I don't uh, come home and harangue him about how bad he looked in the gym or how he sparred or whatever. You know, I tell him before we leave now, you got to go home and rock salt your hands. You got to put some rock salt in the top of your nose. You got to, you know, rub down, put some Epsom salt in the tub and soak, you know. You ran hard today, you got to rest. And then after we get home, I leave it up to him. Now, he's got to do it. Me and my father, when we come home from the gym, we really, really never talk about it because what I do either I'm going somewhere or I'm going down in the basement. The training is over. I'm going down in the basement, watch TV, go relax, uh, go to one of my friends' houses and something like that. onto the body which first came to public attention in 1979 when he became the junior world amateur heavyweight champion by stopping an Austrian fighter named Olaf Meyer. After only 10 pro fights, many felt Marvis was rushed into a shot at Larry Holmes. They were correct. Holmes stopped Marvis in the first round. But since that 1983 disaster, Marvis Fraser has rebounded with six straight victories, including decision wins over able opponents James Sillis, Jose Ribalta, and in his last fight in February, over James Bone Crusher Smith. Though dropped in the middle of the fight, Marvis battled back against the larger Smith to capture the late rounds and a unanimous decision. Marvis is not the first famous heavyweight son to take the ring. There have been others with names like Fitzsimmons, Walcott, and Bear, all failures. But Marvis feels this union has proved beneficial in his case. And you have a, a father training you. There's that tense emotion that you're always trying to do the best for your father. But then on the other hand, you know, you always have that encouragement to keep you going when times seem kind of hard for you. Joe keeps a watchful eye on his son, as his father did for him back in Beaufort, South Carolina. It's a special responsibility. That's a broad word, man. What you say? Father. It's like, you know, there's a lot of daddies in the world today. But it's it very few fathers. I think fathers should take control of families because that's one part of you. I mean, it was that lady and you brought this kid in this world. So how are you not going to be a father? How are you not going to be a good leader? I don't understand. I didn't come from that school. It's a brutal business, but Marvis Fraser believes that working in it has kept this father and son 
close. My father's my father. I can't change that. You know, I love him. He loves me. So that just makes it even better. You know, you have somebody that you really love and that you really care for in your corner.